So today I'm gonna cut my nephew up like always because I ain't cut hair in a very long time and he's always available and ready to be cut. And plus, this is his haircut for his job interview. Right, you got some interviews coming up? Yeah. Where are you trying to work at, bro? In Flying Squirrel. Where? Flying Squirrel. Uh, that's, that sounds fun. Flying Squirrel, hire my nephew, great kid. And he's about to look great too. We about to put him in the game. Let's do this. We're gonna take a little bit off or a good amount off or what? Yeah. All right, so this is the, uh, the OP brush. Very simple, clean brush, but it's a nice brush. I like the finish on it. So I'm just brushing it out, getting moisture in there. That way I can have control when I'm cutting with the shears as well. But I think also, if you don't move the hair too much with curls, once you're done with the top and it starts to dry and you're on the fade portion, I think that uh, it'll dry to the style that you want it. So I'm not particularly 100% trained in the DFS formula. I was one of the early guys training uh, with Josh before he had his curriculum, his formula really built out the way he has it now. I'm glad that I, I got to be there during the early stages of his mastery, right? Because I got to see the evolution of where it is today. And I can tell you it's way better now. Not that it wasn't amazing before, but like the quality of his, uh, of the explanations, all that stuff is just next level, right? At this point, I'm gonna go ahead, start the back here. I'm just kind of framing the haircut here. I don't cut very often, guys, but I, I do cut my nephew's hair whenever he needs one. If I'm messing up with the shears, it's because I'm trying to make sure it's focused while I'm cutting with the scissors. So I'm halfway looking at what I'm doing and halfway looking at my monitor. When I took the Vidal Sassoon course, they would constantly brush the hair and make sure that the hair is laying in the, the where it wants to lay and it's falling nice. I really did like that about the way that uh, Vidal Sassoon's academy taught us that. Mm -hmm. right, and now we're gonna go ahead and start to connect the top here. If you see this, you have a peak right there. Okay, so that's what I'm primarily focusing on here. Okay, let me wet the hair. Wet hair is more controllable hair. Horizontal sections here. Again, I am not that good at this, but I'll try to fake my way through. And to be honest, if you're decent, you're gonna be better than 90% of the barbers in the States. You know what I mean? If you're halfway decent. Anyways, keep the steel blade on your finger so you don't slice your finger. I got plenty of scars. Plenty, 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 plenty of scars. And we can see where we left off, right? That's why you section, to stay organized. No different than guidelines when you're fading. I understand there's a lot of barbers that say, put the line in and take it out. You don't have to put a hard line if you don't want to. But those guidelines do help you stay organized. And in a sense, if you're organized, you're probably gonna be more efficient. Not necessarily the fastest, but the best balance of quality and quantity, I think, is when you're efficient. And so that requires a balance of guidelines, of structure, right? I learned early on, just cause you're moving fast doesn't mean that's good. <laughs> you know, doesn't mean that that's a good thing. If you don't have a good balance of quality, but you can get so efficient that you're faster than most because there's not a lot of people that work on efficiency. A lot of people also do not educate themselves on cutting hair. Efficiency comes with understanding the why. Now that the top is done, my next move is to frame the front here. And typically what I do when I'm framing, I'll put my client in front of the mirror and I'll ask them, what length do you want the, your fringe? You want it on your eyebrows, higher than your eyebrows? How you want your fringe? Uh, I want it like my eyebrows. By your eyebrows? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna take this little corner here and just start to walk it over so it connect, kind of connects to the sides here. Take another little section here. This is not DFS formula. I'm learning DFS formula but this is kind of how I would approach this. We do have um, training this weekend for myself and the team to get on the same page, especially with all of Josh's amazing new updates to his formula. The formula's only gonna get better, guys. So look out for uh, new course drops. So I think that is now flowing nicely into the sides here. And a lot of that length is gonna be motivated by what we cut here that goes into the sides here. I might discover a new way of doing this later, 
I'll put you on, but when it comes to the shear work, I'm not, I'm not OP and I don't pretend to be. Most barbers in the States at the very least don't know half of this stuff, you know, because in a lot of shops in the States, especially, you can get away with just fades and lineups. And the majority of your clients, that's all they really want, to be honest. But I also didn't want to be the type of barber that hid every time long hair came into the shop. Like I would see a lot of barbers do. I don't want to be that guy. I don't know about you guys. If it comes in, I want to be able to cut it and cut it efficiency so I don't lose half my day on a haircut that I struggle with. What do you guys think? This is a sample of a foam. This is not our product. This is a sample, so I'm gonna be trying it out on him for the first time, and we'll see how it does. And you don't wanna like frizz it up, right? You don't wanna just like frizz it up. You wanna kind of work your hands and get it into the curls. We don't wanna shake the hair up because you disturb the curls that way, but we do wanna get it all in. Okay, and I'm just gonna use this vent brush one more time just to get the hairs together. Curls need friends, that's what they say. At least that's what my wife taught me. And so if curls need friends, we wanna really get the ha hairs to come together. And then when it starts to curl, you know, we can kind of come in here, even use like a pick to get into the roots and not necessarily comb through the hair and break it up. You don't want that. What you would really want is like a pick to get into the roots, lift a little bit, and then you have some pretty dope curls with life in them. I wanna show you guys kind of the curls coming together on the top. So not sponsored by Meta, sponsored by Alec the Barber, all the way in Canada. Shout out to my dog, this is on Instagram. He bought these for me for my birthday. But Meta, if you wanna sponsor the video, let me know. Email is bossy at 245com But take a look from my lens, see the curls are already starting to come together. You can see where the life of the curls are gonna be. And so the more hairs that you can kind of bunch together, the better. But you can also see it's nicely cut into the hair growth pattern, just like this. And so when we go to fade, it's gonna blend right in and the shape is gonna, and the shape is gonna really take place. So you can see the shape comes out this way. There's gonna be more volume in here. As it dries, you can already see the volume coming in. It's gonna be an amazing finish. We'll hairspray it just to give it a little bit more hold. Looks pretty badass to me. My view through my meta glasses. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is clear out the bulk. I'm gonna use my number three guard, pry open and then close right underneath. And all I'm doing right here is just trying to make sure that it blends into the shear work that we just did. Because if it does that, then I know that I can just go to a three guard underneath this, or the desired length on the, on the bottom here, to my desired length at the top, which the desired length is gonna be a three, because we know that connects to the parietal ridge. I can go right underneath that with my three guard closed. As you can see, I'm right underneath, right where I just left off. So I know now, if I'm going bald on the sides, I'm just blending to a number three guard. I don't care what the length is on top, because that's already cut. And that's really one of the methodologies of the DFS formula that I think makes life easier for a barber. Remember, we're trying to keep that shape, this length that's here, okay? We're trying to get that to reach. We don't want to go above this area. And this is the occipital bone right in here. I'm not saying to stay underneath the occipital bone, but this parietal ridge area, you do have to stay below. One of the, my common mistakes is I don't go up high enough on one side than the other. I need to make sure that whatever I'm, I've done on the other side, I'm doing on this side. And you wanna make sure you're combing the hair, guys. Comb the hair, make sure the finish is, is what you want it to be. If you're not combing, you're not gonna be able to really gauge the finish after you cut it with the clippers. What I mean by that is, is there still a line? Is there still bulk? You're not really going to be able to tell unless you're combing the hair. Underneath that, we're gonna go number three guard closed, just like we did on the other side, guys. And while I'm here, go ahead and debulk a little bit lower. Now we got a solid foundation to really start to do this fade. You guys could say I'm punching it in, but I'm not punching it in hard, guys. I'm not like putting a bunch of pressure. I'm letting the blade do the cutting and working my way around. And guys, I'm making sure it's the same distance all the way through. Using the same method for, I don't know, 12 years now. The three finger, this is an easy way to identify really how much um, space you need for a fade. Now, you can decide that you're gonna ball this out later. And a lot of barbers like to do that because it does create a contrast and they can see the fade a little bit better. I do find for me at least, it takes longer. For some barbers, it doesn't really make a difference. But for me, it makes my haircuts take longer 
So I'll make sure you get every hair. You don't want to keep coming back and, and ball somebody out. And I'm loving these trimmers, man. These trimmers are, are dope. I don't know if you guys have seen this shaver, but this shaver's fire. And as I get closer to the line, I'm, I am kind of flicking out actually with the shaver and using corners as I get higher, closer to the, the line of demarcation. Flipping around, using the corners. I did get some new shavers because I love the single foil shavers. The UV limited edition shavers. My favorite is this single foil one. Crack, matter of fact, I'm gonna use it right now. There's really no build quality like this on the market. This is crazy. Well done. Ooh, thing crunching. You can put your guidelines in, and obviously the wider the guidelines, the more stretched your fade is gonna come out. The more compressed your guidelines, the more of a, a tighter blend you're gonna get. And to each their own. Everybody likes their fades a little bit differently. I tend to like stretch more, but I can do both, you know? And I think that's important to be able to, to do. I also think most of the time when a customer wants a fade, they're asking for the stretched, because that is more popular. And so that's kind of my default, my go-to. Usually if I do a good fade on them, they'll still come see me because the fade was good. And they might say, hey, can you do a little bit more compressed or a little bit tighter, or maybe bring me a photo of a compressed fade. That's happened uh, only a few times, I would say, in my career, and I've been doing this a long time. And then you can decide, do you wanna start blending this out now? For those of you that get lost quickly in your fades, you can blend it out now, and then don't move on to the next guideline until this is faded out. And then another route you can do is go ahead and put all your guidelines in, all the way through, make sure they're even, and then you can decide to fade up or fade down. Some people prefer that process as well. And everybody has their idea of what's the best way, what's the fastest way. Nah, it don't work like that. What do you feel the most competent with turn that on when you need to be efficient. If you wanna try a different technique, like let's say you're gonna start trying to learn the DFS formula. Do that when you have time. Let's say I have a haircut here and I don't have another appointment for an hour. I'll go ahead and try a different way. I'll try the DFS formula way. We had a number three here. So I know that my number two is gonna fade this section out. Beautiful. So I'm just gonna go ahead, use my two open, two close, and just start fading down. You shouldn't be creating another line, guys. It should just be blending right into what you just did with that three guard. That's the beauty of this system. Once the top is done, the foundation is set. The clipper work is the easy part, okay? We've done the two open, now we'll go two closed, right underneath where we just left off. And notice how I almost go all the way to the back here, okay? We're gonna tie that all together by the time we're done. So now my next guard down is my one and a half guard. And to be safe, you could go one and a half guard open, See if it cuts anything. And if it isn't, then you know you're safe to close it a little bit more. So I usually go halfway closed, especially if it's my, you know, if it's a regular, I kind of know when I can just go straight to my one, one and a half guard halfway open. The line is gone. So I'm gonna go back to my one guard open. We're kind of um, bleeding over the same spots just to really make that, make that come together. Cause a blend is what? It's two sections that blend into one another. So you need a little bit of overlap, right? I'm just going right underneath that. I need you to stay awake, my boy. Okay, okay so we're closed at this point. We're just lightening up this place, this spot. All right, so I'm gonna go half guard, halfway open because that line is already pretty much gone, guys. I'm gonna go up enough until I can hear it. Let me put my mic to it so y'all can see what I'm talking about. We're gonna go blade all the way open, not trying to create another line. As you go up, use the corner if you feel nervous that you're gonna make another line. But remember, this area should be the blade open anyways. So now I'm gonna go about halfway close, and go a little bit lower than I was before. And if you decide you wanna fade up from here, you can. And, and marry everything together, you can. We're gonna go literally one click open, and underneath that, we're gonna go closed. And if that line is still there, after we've gone closed, and let's say you've stretched the scalp and you've gone in there and there's still a line, what do you think I should do? Go get the trimmer. It'll take three seconds to take that line out. See, I'm stretching the scalp out to get kind of tight in there. Okay, now we're all the way closed. This is gonna be the hardest part of the fade. It's usually the back here and making it flow nicely into the sides, I'm sure. A lot of you barbers can relate. Let me go ahead and start to take that bottom line out like we talked about. 
This is why I like to do this part, ball them out right away, because in this part, I can see the exact line of demarcation that I need to take out. I'm just using my corners to take that line out. All right, just like the other side, guys, we're starting with a uh, number two. And I flick out as I get higher here, a little bit. Right beneath here, we'll go number two guard closed. I get barber side in there, don't judge me. Halfway open, just like before. Now I went from my one and a half guard halfway to my one guard open again. We're just bleeding it up just a little bit into the section we just left off at. Now I'm going all the way closed. You guys can see it's starting to take that line away. If I was in the barber shop and I was trying to hustle, I'd probably skip the half guard, go straight to my blade open. Let's try that in a, in a little, a small section and see if it works. This is like Babeless's newest blade. It's a, it's a MIM blade, but you guys can see it's mold injected, really cool designs. So I don't know if it's gonna be too tight to take this bottom line out, but let's check. So you guys can see the bottom line. It takes that little line all the way out, right? Without creating another line. See that? So using the corners. To me, it's not gonna be the best quality fade doing this, but if you're trying to get through a, 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 busy, a busy rush, you might be able to get away with it. Right, and now I can start to close it right beneath where I just left off. And this is why I go to a brush. Hair debris can literally live on the scalp and stick to the scalp. Now I can close it up some, focusing on taking this bottom line out. So I would start at the bottom line here and then go up. Start at the bottom line with some actual pressure and then as you go up, relieve that pressure. Okay, now we'll go all the way close. And it might not take the line out. Remember, we're putting actual pressure at the bottom of the line and then relieving some of the pressure as we go up. Because the last thing we want to do is create another line. So relieve the pressure a little bit as you go up. And if you need to, open the, the lever up a little bit, just in case you get a little scared to create another line of demarcation. And obviously, if it's not cutting, you can close it up some. I'm going to go ahead and line him up. This is all fringe, guys. So I'm not afraid to cut this fringe area up to create his hairline. We want to do it tastefully, but we also don't need to line up, look, the bottom of his bangs. This is what a lot of barbers want to do. Oh, I want to push him back. Oh, I want to push him back, so this is what they do. Guys, one gust of wind, that's what his hairline looks like. A little bit of water, that's what his hairline looks like now. There's no line up there. I do my corner here, my corner there, and I walk it over to make sure it's nice and even. This side right here, you can tell, is naturally higher. So we have to be careful to keep this side natural while also making them look even, right? His hairline is not perfect, but we're doing the best we can. Start a little corner here and walk it through. Okay? When you're happy with the rough draft, you can go in and make it sharper. He doesn't have like the strongest C cup either. Like there's definitely, if I take off like the wrong hair, I'm gonna have to push the C cup higher. I don't want that. I'm gonna go with my one and a half guard all the way open while my nephew yawns and makes his, uh, his, his scalp scrunch. That way I can't fade him. No yawning, I'm just kidding. All right, so one and a half guard all the way open. Close it up some. Right in here, it's a little dark. So I'm gonna really focus in here. That looks much better in my opinion. So if you don't know yet about No Drip, No Drip's probably the top selling enhancement on Amazon. With that being said, if you haven't tried it, try it out. It's the only enhancement that I know of that's ready to go out of a bottle with a shaker that's not a semi-permanent. This is designed to stain the skin. If you're messing with semi-permanents, make sure you patch test your clients. Because if you don't and they break out and they end up in the hospital, guess who can be liable? You. And I've paid hospital bills before because my barbers didn't patch test in the past. So with this, you don't have to worry about patch tests and it lasts just as long as your semi-permanents. And the best solution for cleaning out your airbrush is right here. You can get it on Amazon as well or tomb45.com. It's so good. See this card? See the color that was there? See how it's gone now, that color? It just wipes right off with this solution. So if you use this in your airbrushes, doesn't matter if it's ours or anybody's, this will keep your airbrush 
working so amazing. Okay, very cheap on Amazon or tomb45.com or your local store. Spraying outside, we're letting it bleed through. Outside, we're letting it bleed through. I just wanna make sure that this corner is done well. And so I'm focusing primarily in that corner. I put just a tad bit of enhancements. I could style the hair some more, and, but I don't have a pick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the OP comb, OP45 comb, and just at the roots. See how I'm going into the roots and lifting up, into the roots and lifting up. Into, I'm not combing all the way through. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Wherever I want volume, combing pretty much halfway in and lifting up. Because if you comb all the way through, you're gonna make it frizzier. Even though it's getting a little frizzy, it'll get a lot worse if you comb all the way through. What we're looking to do is build volume and shape. When this foam comes out, we will definitely let you guys know. Any haircut that requires a, a wave pattern, that foam is really, really good for. Even wavers, my wavers know what I'm talking about. Okay, we're gonna frame the face a little bit with his curls. Damn it, Tito, another one? 